This time we're going to work on antiquing the faux ivory grips I bought uh, from PA made by Umarex. All the different grips they got for the Umarex single action army Colt fit each other. So I got the faux ivory ones. I had that mounted on the pistol as you can see here. And uh, I liked the, the antique, ivory, uh, antique ivory job that John Wayne had done on his, uh, his full ivory grips. They call it polyurethane, but it's a different sort of material and it's solid. They're, they're solid compared to the hollow ones on these CO2 pistols. So they were using three different colors of leather dye and denatured alcohol and everything to thin it down with all and soaking them and uh, the way Bat Jack did it but he didn't say how long he soaked it for it's like one part of this to two parts of that you know like one part of orange to two to like to one or two parts of orange to one part of a medium brown and yellow or something I'm gonna go with uh, True oil tinted with a few drops of uh, Minwax number 231 gunstock oil stain and brush that on evenly and let it dry. And we'll see how the, if there's any swirls in the plastic that'll show through, like that solid material they use for the regular uh, single action army grips. I just don't think it's the same material as the polyurethane knees are. But without further ado, let's head it. Okay, get the water glass on there. There's some Minwax uh, oil stain number 231 gun stock. I'm going to mix a few drops of that with the Birchwood Casey True Oil and these little hefty three ounce bathroom cups. And use the Q-tips to put it on there. I mean, to store it with or whatever. Oh, you know what? Uh. And here's the hardest brushes my wife got me for various things I do with the rifles and junk like that, so I can brush it on them things. And I got to go get the blue painter's tape, so I can. Uh, Tape a. I can tape this Allen key on the other side like that, so I got something to hold it with. And then we will see what happens. See what it looks like. Get the right, get the tone right. It'd be fine, but if the swirls in the plastic work like the the, the ones that are more solid, that instead of hollow like these that they make. For a, a single action Colt Petrosoli or or whatever, then uh, it'll have those darker and lighter streaks and whatnot, like like the bone ivory does. So we'll see. You can see there they're more like a Devonshire cream color. So then we'll see what happens. Okay, after watching watching Bat Jack's videos on uh, making antique antiqued faux ivory grips, as he says, his were polymer, but that was some sort of solid cast material that wasn't shiny like this poly these polyurethane Umarex grips here that again are faux ivory, but not the same material. So I don't think using leather dye and denatured alcohol and all that stuff is going to work to just soak a color a, a, a baton on it into it I've had a couple ideas with these artist brushes that my wife bought me right here they're different you know, like 18 zero striping brushes and the wide flat 
sort of artist brushes like uh, Rob, Bob Ross might have used or something like that. I use one of those of the appropriate size to uh, brush it on these grips here after I take cut them down on maybe 400 grit so it'll stick better and then uh, coat it evenly let it flow out and soak in and we'll, we'll see what happens. Now what I was going to do is use true oil with a few drops of uh, Minwax number 231 uh, gun stock oil stain because that'll still uh, dry on there real nice and let to get the metal parts uh, down here covered with covered with, with that blue painters tape and all of that so let me get these grips off of here and we'll get ready to see what we can do okay now on the inside of the left hand grip where the, the, the CO2 cartridge goes you got all this and this piece of metal and the little two jewelers Phillips screws go in those two little holes right there and there's a third one on the right so I use, it's got a this screwdriver's got a magnet on the end it's either standard or Phillips that you get from the the car parts counter typically that's just the right size for these little bitty screws so I'll get the third screw out you gotta be careful because this screws into those plastic bosses right there as you can see from the the two that went through this little plate here and uh, we can pull that metal part out no metal and metal you know bevel shaped washers or nothing in there so we're good there just like Bat Jack was showing and the ones that he did and I'm going to use true oil and a few drops of uh, like I said the number 231 uh, gun stock oil stain from Minwax I used on the 160 variant one right there it looks brown from this angle I don't know why but it's actually more like a, a brownish amber color get that apart and then we'll grab some uh, 400 grit emery paper to cut the shine off the outside so this stuff sticks a little better and we'll see what happens Remember, folks, you can make them darker, but you can't make them lighter without a, without extra work. With my coating, it's going to be a little easier. But with the leather dyes and denatured alcohol and junk bat, bat jack was using, it soaks in, so that'd be a whole lot harder to get that off and correct yourself if it's too dark. Okay, well, from what I now saw in there, there's no screw in there, and you can't use anything to push it off the plastic it's on there pretty tight I don't know if they glued it and why this thing screws on clips because there's a clip right here that goes in that little slot right there so I don't know have to use some blue tape on that after all the and trim it around there to keep it keep the metal covered and everything don't want to mess that up okay and here's some 3m 400 grit uh, emery paper wet or dry to just cut the gloss off the surface there it doesn't look like much but it's a lot shinier and smoother than you think it's a hair darker, it looks like bone is laid out in the weather a, a little bit after it dries. It's, still, it's bleach white when it's live, but when it's dead it gets like a Devonshire cream sort of color to it. But that's what we're dealing with. Okay. I got the shine cut off except for 
the right side one down there for trademark designations. I want to leave that there. And that's got the shine cut off it for the most part. You'll see some plastic dust come off the, that 400 grit memory paper when you're sanding it, but that's okay. It'll basically look like just cut the shine off no more now this one I can hold on to this wrench here that you stick in the bottom of the pistol to tighten the capsule against the piercing thing up inside the, the grip frame to open the co2 cartridge so got something to hold on to there but this one I got nothing I have to Take a little Allen wrench there and a piece of tape and tape it in there so I got something to hold it with. Well, I'll figure that out. And I got to move some stuff around over here. Got these two reclining racing buckets and these big boxes here blocking the way into my fermenter stand where I think I got my stain at because I don't see it on that big shelf in the corner right there. Good. Everything's buried around here. That's what I mean. I don't have any place else. To, I can't use the attic for the birds or the, the basement, which is damp. You know, I, just, I got no place to put these great big boxes, and I can't get anybody to buy these reclining racing buckets off me. It's $600, brand new, never used. I'd take $300 just to get rid of them. Still in the box, brand new. Get these dang things out of there, out of here, so I can have my room back. I can't get into anything over here, and I got these guns and I got another pile of rifles stacked up over there I've got to go on two racks on this wall here if I could get it filled painted and all that junk so I can hang them up and get that out of the way besides my three ounce bathroom cup in that hefty bag or behind all that junk I can't get to it stain in the cups I need to mix it in but I'll figure it out okay get the water glass on there's, there's some Minwax uh, oil stain number 231 gun stock I'm gonna mix a few drops of that with the Birchwood Casey True Oil and these little hefty 3 ounce bathroom cups and use the Q-tips to put it on there I mean to store it with or whatever oh you know what and here's the hardest brushes my wife got me for various things I do with the rifles and junk like that so I can brush it on them things and I gotta go get the blue painter's tape so I can uh, tape a I can tape this Allen key on the other side like that so I got something to hold it with and then we will see what happens see what it looks like get the right get the tone right it'll be fine but this, if the swirls in the plastic work like the the, the ones that are more solid that instead of hollow like these that they make for a, a single action Colt Petrosoli or or whatever then uh, it'll have those darker and lighter streaks and whatnot like like the bone ivory does so we'll see you can see there they're more like a Devonshire cream color So then we'll see what happens. Okay, I just put six drops of the uh, gunstock oil stain in there with a Q-tip. You get about three drops right quick when, for, with one dip. So I dipped it twice and we'll stir that up. And then we'll put some on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, here's what they look like after the first coat. It looks they look lighter than they really are I can't get a it's just just like that 
the finishing job I did on that 760 Power Master variant one. With the way those opaline flames are, it, it's like doing peekaboo flames on a car or something. It, it's you can't see it unless it's real good. Let's look at it from a certain angle, and that's the way this is. I'll have to work on it. I might take a couple of coats. And as I said, it looks darker, in, a bit darker in person. Looks pretty decent in person, but uh, I just need to get a bit more streakiness to it. You can kind of start to see it here. It's real streaky when you use that artist, that flat, wide sort of artist brush. But it, like I said, the stuff flows like crazy. So we'll just let it sit and see what happens. Okay, I forgot to push the record button before, folks. Sorry. Anyway, I mixed up a wee little bit of true oil. Just a little more than that. With maybe four drops of the, the oil stain there. And gave these a second coat. Looking a little better. Stuff flows out, but... It'll... Look pretty decent. And like I said, it's darker than what it looks. And it's the, the brush I used. Do one coat per 24 hours, so... 11.51, say about noon tomorrow. I can put another coat of color on or just the coat of pure true oil to uh, start sealing it up. It's got better color. I'm just frustrated because I can't, I probably have to have a pitch black in here to show you the color I'm seeing. I need to look at the the booklet for this camera and see if I, I can figure out how to adjust the color on this so it looks like what I see. You know, it's I got it on automatic, but I'd, if I could adjust what autom the range is for automatic, it'd be great. And uh, once I get get that all, the last coat, I'll let, let, have to let it dry for a couple of days. And then I can set up the drill press and drill the holes for those silver for that silver snake on the left side grip on it, sitting on the right right here with the pencil on it. I'm not putting them on both sides. I'd make the grip too wide, in my opinion. I'll just put it on the left side because I'm left-handed, so when it's in the holster, you can see it. So the save the, the, the right-handed snake for a pistol that, that I put on, like a cross-draw pistol I put on the right side of my cell phone I'm wearing the gun belt. Looking pretty good, though. Like I said, they're about twice that dark from the way my eye sees it. It's just frustrating me because I've got this camera. I won't see it the way I do. So we'll let these sit till tomorrow and then we'll see what we got. It's the next morning, 9.31 a.m. They're dry enough to coat. I don't have to wait 24 hours. You know, like noon. See if you can see this, but it's shiny, but it's kind of grainy like, too. It's hoping it wouldn't do that with using 400 grit. But we we'll put some pure true oil over it with a 
Let me a bit wider brush so that uh, you can get a nice like a uh, orangey amber clear coat over that and to seal it real nice. So we'll get to that. Okay, there's the coat of pure true oil I put over it. It looks really light and it's really not. It's more of a medium tone. You know, when you're brushing, brush lightly. Let the fluid flow out and do the work for you. And this stuff will make these brushes get kind of stiff. I had this smaller one here. I had to clean again. I have to get that to, get to, to clear out, clean out real good. And the smaller one here, I used to actually put the colored material on there to antique it, is a flat number eight. And a larger one I put the clear coat over, over it all with, was a flat number 12, as you can see here. And let's see if we can get, oh, I can't get, I think fingers are stuck on everything. Got too much junk under this monitor. Every time I clean it up, it all piles up again. Anyway, that, it got that from Walmart. There's only actually a couple of camel hair ones in there, but which I, I prefer sable or camel hair. So that's what that is, folk art brand. And we will let these sit maybe even till, till Saturday morning before we reassemble them on the pistol and everything. So you can see what they look like. I just want to make sure they get really good and dry before I handle them. We dry the touch in 24 hours. It might take up to a week for this darn stuff to set good. But I can just get the lighting right. I don't know. I got to figure out how you get a little less contrast on this thing. I mean, I can change how how I see it in the viewer on the back of the camera here, but. You know what I mean? It, it getting it through the lens, just certain codes and stuff. I don't know. I gotta look all that up. I'm at the point where I just plain need to be able to alter how this thing sees color, so I can see it. You guys can see what I see. This looks like there's almost no color at all, and there is. It's more like a medium tone almost, like the medium side of light. Okay, this is more like what the grips look like to me after I've found this exposure adjustment button on the back of these Canon power shots. It basically adjusts the contrast. So this is more, this, this is what they actually look like. Not bad. Okay, well, I can't adjust the contrast on this. Anyway, they're done. They're dry and it just they're dry enough where I can put the pistol back together. So I'll get to screwing these things back together and I'll show you when it's done. Okay, one little important point of interest here I neglected to mention. Well first of all I'm using the smaller of the two uh Umer X uh little, little little screwdriver bits there with this thing you it's either a screwdriver or you hold the cable kind of thingy anyway. This is the left side grip. The left side grip is tapped, so you got to make sure you clean out any uh, true oil mixture that gets down in there. I used the straight seal pick. I got Pittsburgh tools, but I got it from oh, the place that took over the Sears Tool Center on the corner, Harbor Freight. Four of them for a few bucks a set. 
real handy and they're, and they're metal and they're nice and firm. I see a lot of people, even Kenny Corman, to use these. So anyway, that screw has to, you have to put this screw in first because it's, well you put, you put the snakes on, it covers the screws and it's okay on this side because that's just there for looking at. On, on the left side. On the right side it screws it in so you can't cover the screw. You have to notch out the body of the snake a little bit to where you got room to get a, get this uh, get this kind of a screwdriver bit in there. Fits these things real nice too. It's made for guns, particular size gun screws and junk like that. So let's continue on here. Now we gotta put put those two little screws in that metal bracket back in there, right where those two uh, screw bosses are. Okay, there we go. That's the left side. As I said, that screw goes in, but it doesn't hold anything because there's a little notch, little tab that goes in that notched hole right there I showed you earlier. So. Not bad. And uh, we got. I got to let that. I'll put that in the holster where not, I'll touch it, and it'll sit there and dry for maybe another week or so. so it, it's dry enough to touch, but you can still mess it up if you press hard enough. So. I'm not even going to really touch them to so I put it away and let it dry. So that's it. It looks looks more like antique ivory. Looks a little better in a, that Devonshire cream color. It's a little little too white for me. And you can't use the the real single action army grips on this one because the grips are physically longer. There was a TV star, uh, maybe on the Virginian, some, maybe. He had really long uh, grips on his pistols. Big hands or something, I guess. But yeah, the real ones are shorter than these and won't fit. Even though they use the same screw hole in the same place and everything. Okay, here's what it looks like all back together in, in the holster and everything. I wanted to give you guys a, kind of view, a look at what it looks like all back together. Not bad, huh? Does look pretty good. Okay, well that's it for this time. Hope you all learned something or maybe thought of a better way, even better way to do this. I might still try the leather dies one of these times, but it just, it just, I don't think it'll work on polystyrene. The polyurethane is a little bit different, so I'll work on that if I know that. So, oh, and next time we'll put the snakes on the grip, well, the left side anyway. And then we will get to the Model 70 resto and checkering and all that. I'm still waiting for the checkering cradle to come in. The guy's not posting over oh, when it goes in out of the post office and all that stuff. So, good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again. So, keep your gun oil and your powder dry.